So for this biomech cyborg character, we're going to begin by just using this generic human head that's been sculpted just right out of a sphere. And this is just a polysphere in ZBrush. This is from my book, second edition uh, ZBrush character creation, and it's also included with the, the files for this tutorial. So it's really just a, your generic heroic style human head, and we're going to go ahead and just start turning this into the base for our cyborg. Now, what I'm thinking is that this guy is not going to be in the best of shape. I like the idea of giving him a bit of a bulbous cranium and a smaller facial mass, almost like a, um, a fetal head. Just makes him seem, you know, even more unsettling, like he's, uh, you know, being fed and cared for by the uh, by the mechanics that he's built into. So the the biological parts really are almost are like just a big infant. I'm just using the move brush just to change the relationship of all these these elements, these forms. Really want to take back some of that. Oops. Take back some of that jaw mass and don't want to do quite that much. So I'm just becoming a little too humorous there. So I'm going to leave some of that jaw there just for right now. But not not quite so strong. I don't want the, the angle to the jaw. I don't want that manly squared off jaw anymore. I want to weaken it a bit. Ultimately we're going to be taking the neck off of this guy. We're just going to have the head and at the back of the head we're going to have uh, uh, some openings where you can see into some kind of internal workings there. I think we will keep the ears, for now at least. mask out this portion of the face here and just see what it's like if I pull this down lengthening that upper lip and that just makes him feel sort of simian so I'm not going to go with that using the clay tubes brush to change the shapes here. And I'm going to mask this out a bit. Mask out the head, that is. I'm going to stretch this portion out. Oops. Make sure that I get all of that. There we go. And let's see what it's like if we just experimenting with a longer neck. I'm definitely going to terminate this guy about there. That's what we're going to use from the head. The back of the skull, we're going to terminate that as well. We're going to push that in and put some mechanics in there. We're going to have some pistons and some mechanical forms coming off the neck and attaching him to. Uh, to the rest of his unfortunate biomechanical body. Don't want this guy to look like he's a super warrior necessarily. I want it to look more like a, a really unpleasant way to live, kind of like a Frankenstein sort of. Um, maybe he's the prototype warrior. I just wanted to see if they could make it work, and it did work, unfortunately, for this fellow. So he has to actually wander around being partially mechanized. So it's just kind of the thought process. I'm I'm starting from this point. I just at least I know that I'm not going for a uh, you know a super heroic or super villain kind of thing. I'm going for more of a bit of pathos and a little bit of an unsettling character, more of a Frankenstein character than a um, 
than a heroic character. I'm just starting to kind of accentuate the shapes around the eyes here. I want him to look sickly. So I'm trying to bring in bring out some of these skeletal shapes here. Turn down the strength on that smooth brush. There we go. Going back to our move brush and let's knock some of this back. And you know, maybe I'll change my mind through the course of the tutorial. You'll be able to look at the final product now and know if I'm just how close to this we stay. I could go back and re-edit this, but I think there's a lot of value in seeing how things develop. You know, if I do decide to make a change to something, I'll verbally say why. And I, I've always enjoyed that. I enjoyed that watching, like, uh, painting demos on television. I always like watching things develop, so hopefully you do too. Since we've got the freedom to put this video on the DVD, uh, we're able to, to really show a whole lot of the process. Let's smooth this back. Really want this guy to be I'm thinking of Peter Weller right now, the actor Peter Weller. If you Google him, you'll see exactly who I'm talking about. He played Robocop. He's just got a great face. Really great face. Good actor. I'm gonna narrow these lips a bit. From memory, I'm thinking Peter Weller actually does have narrow lips. I'm not going for a, a likeness to him. It was just, it reminded me of him there. And I want to fix the eyelids here. mask out this area. Going with the move brush. And just pull this back a little bit. There we go. Step up. Step up a subdivision level here. And we'll bring this eyelid over. I'm going to mask this area out invert the mass. Typically there's a fold of fatty tissue there. just want to get that in there. Alright. It's kind of an interesting hollow happening there. That was a bit of an accident, but it's interesting. and save my work. Now I'm going to go to the polygroups menu and I'm actually going to group visible just so I can very easily reselect this portion of the head because I know that that's about what I want so all I have to do is control shift click on it and it'll it'll reselect just that area. So at this stage I'm going to start doing just play around a little bit with the back of the head because this is where we're going to be putting a lot of our mechanical elements here. <laughs> 